Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of the Hardest Series. Uh, as you're wondering why Julian isn't here, Julian isn't here because he's on holiday again. Alright, so uh, we're somewhere in Bangsa. We're going to check out this guy's sneaker collection. Uh, many of you know him as a DJ, but I know him as a crazy sneakerhead. He's been around the scene for a long, long time. So let's go check it out. Easy sleepers, man. Hey! What's up, man? What's up? Hey, guys. I'm Blink, and you're watching the Hoarders series. So, we've gotten permission to finally raid your house, and we're inside your room. Uh, your collection's behind. But before we go and talk about your collection, just like an introduction, like, how long have you been collecting shoes? I think for the past... Ooh, 25, 30 years. Yeah, actually you look very young, but you've been in the scene for a long ass time. Like really, really kind long of, time. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I see behind us is there's not a lot of shoes, but there's a lot of quality. Maybe I just want to ask like, what happened to your major, like all your shoes? Did you like give them away? Did you throw them away or what? Um, through the years, I think um, with anything, uh, I think the taste and also priorities change. That's why um, it has evolved and also the collection got smaller. I think I started playing basketball at a very young age and that's the reason I got into sneakers. Mm. It's all about the game. And um, I was blessed that my mom was very supportive with basketball and she got me Jordans. Mm. And with me being in love with Jordans and that's how I slowly gradually became a sneakerhead. Okay, so it was more basketball shoes and then what, what I mean, a lot of people started with Jordans. Yeah. He's the GOAT. Like, what is your current... Like, what are you looking for in a shoe right now? Uh, well, right now, I, I think it's, um, it's a problem looking for a shoe, I would say. <laughs> Just because um, I think I've developed something called plantar fasciitis, which is a problem with the foot. It's actually a problem with a lot of Malaysians because of uh, flat-footed people. Okay. So if you are flat-footed at a young age, you should take care of it while you're young because I never knew and I'm always standing because of my work, my DJ work, or I'm playing a lot of sports. If the, the shoe doesn't have much structure, I would actually have pains the next day when you wake up. I see. So All that's right. why nowadays my rotation has gone much lesser and um, it, I, need, I need to try the shoe before I buy them. All right, uh, I guess introduction done. Let's talk some shoes. That's already detailed, man. What introduction, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first up, Maybe we talk about like currently. Hmm, man, there's so many shoes here that have so many stories. Uh, maybe we just talk about the top three. Oh, uh, okay. Let's talk about my all-time favorite top three from here, mm -hmm. and my all-time favorite top three that I don't have. <laughs> okay, okay. Right? Because all right. I don't think I have all the shoes that I really, really want still. All right. So my top three within this collection will be the Fragment Jordan ones. Actually, this pair, I always wanted it for a very, very long time, um, but I never could afford it. So um, it's only just recently, I think it was early last year before I went to Coachella, okay. I purchased this. What was the damage then? I mean, it, it was still sky high. Like. Uh, but I would say it's good buy, you know? Uh, <laughs> but let, let's not talk about the numbers. Because uh, I was looking these, at it, yeah. I was like, oh my god. Because these are these are costing, I think, about 10, 10K now. Yeah, upwards. So, upwards yeah, yeah. yeah, so I, I got them for a good price. I mean, it was second hand, but it was, I think, 90% uh, condition. This is when you know you're a real sneaker hit. You still wear them. And yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't clean my shoes really. Yeah. So. Okay, just look at our collection. You can see like almost everything is worn. There are some that are not worn, but you wear majority of your shoes, right? Yeah, most. It's torn between my, cause my current top three, I think that's four. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, let's do top four. Okay, top let's four. Do top four. Um, I would say uh, the Tom Sex will my, will be my top three. All right. Ever. Why? Why? Um, what? I think it's super unique uh, i think what sold me this shoe was more of the story mm, and the yeah. packaging and the book the booklet that came with it because if you actually read the booklet it kind of tells you like you don't need much in life just one very yeah. good one you know yeah, yeah. so this was kind of like an example of my mentality uh, going through that that, that phase okay. where i actually purchased less but better all right so this yeah this is definitely a good pick 
Next, which one? My most worn shoe right now is the Statics V2. I love this. I, yeah. I low-key regret not getting this pair. Yeah, actually, I have, um, I doubled up and it's actually fresh out of the box. So when these really run down, I got another pair because I, I think it goes with everything you wear, shorts, jeans, yeah. uh, black trousers. And good thing about this is even though you've really beat them, you send them and go and wash them and they look new. They look fresh again? Yeah, yeah. On Moreover, um, I think you, you asked me what's the decision to buy a pair of shoes yeah. now. Uh, not only the foot problem, but I think it's about going with the fit. Uh, that's why I wouldn't call really call myself a sneakerhead, I feel. I think the sneakerheads are really into like the sneakers and like the colorways. I was like that back then when I started, but I think for the past decade, I haven't really been like that. I just, whatever that comes out, I right. like, I buy. So it's more fashion driven? Yes. Exactly. All right, uh, one more. One more, um, it's definitely the, the latest pickup. It's the, the LVs by Virgil. So I've been wearing mm. these very often. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say they are the best in terms of um, comfort when you wear them straight away. Okay. These are proper Italian sneakers. You gotta break them in. Yes. Okay. So that's your topic right now. Yeah. Uh, but there are also some very, very notable mentions. I'll just dive straight into it. The one behind you. So maybe uh, you carry one side. Uh, you carry one. Carry one. Okay. Yeah. Just sure. so you know, if you if you don't know, these are uh, Nike Federers. That's the yeah. Jordan Federer. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time a tennis has tennis player has ever collabed with Jordan. Yes, I think it's um, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first duo athlete collab. Why? These are interesting and why did I buy them and haven't even worn them? Jordan and Roger Federer are my top two athletes of all time. Yeah, the goals. Um, they, yeah, for me, I mean, I, I don't play tennis, but tennis was one of my favorite sports to watch. Mm. And of course, Jordan, there's um, nothing but to say he's the GOAT, right? <laughs> so yeah, I, um, I really wanted the white cements that came out first. Mm -hmm. That debut, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in the uh, US Open. Yeah. The year before. The year before this. Year, year before like, yeah. this, yeah. So, but those were not really... Um, yeah. And and very limited. Yeah. Yeah, Nike so, style is usually the first one that's super limited. Were you a huge fan of 95? Yeah, because I want to tell a little bit story on the 95s. Yeah. I may not have a pair at the current collection, but back in the days um, when I loved raving, yeah. 95s were like the shoe to go for if you were a raver. Yeah. So that was my roots and uh, MX95 was the shit. Yeah, but they always kind of crumble after a few years, right? Yeah. So that's why well. it's a bit hard to find one after so many years. Yeah, and these are without the mat. So, yeah. and zoom air. So I think these will last. So which one is like your top three most sentimental one? Like you will never sell them or like if you if they were stolen, you will cry like for days. There are some that may not be as expensive as some, but to me, why I've hold them till today is because they hold a lot of uh, sentimental values to me. Uh, okay, before I get all the sneakerheads out there angry, how do you pronounce um, the Keith's owner name? He pronounced his name as Ronnie Fight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure yeah. so that the sneakerheads don't get angry with yeah. me. I used to call him Ronnie Fight. Same, exactly. So, like... These two here, well, I'll pick it up so that you can see it, yeah. is that, um, <laughs> yeah. So happened, he recently re-released these two mm. exact models. Yep. And um, there's a very interesting story with how he released this one. He only did it in the Brooklyn Keith store mm. and he didn't make it online because he wanted people nowadays to feel how sneakerheads felt back then. Yeah. Because back then there were no internet orders. You really had to go to the country or the city to actually purchase that shoe. Up, up for these. Yeah, 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 yeah. These were one of my favorite colorways back then. That's why I've kept them and I and I can say Air Force One really holds yeah, well. Yeah. With, yeah. They, they age well. Why these ones? Of course, this was when uh, I think around the time Jordan was not around, that's why Pippen got the MVP as well. I mean, he, he played a super good game. But I scored a buzzer beater three-pointer in a Japanese international school. Well, I'll repeat that, Japanese international school. Because it was like, <laughs> uh, So yeah, it was a buzzer beater. We won the game for my school. And I've kept them to today and never worn them. This was year 2000. You can see that. See, yeah, That's right. Zero, 00 right there. It's 2000. And um, this, I, I was right. It was 93. Oh, damn. You kept them so long. Yeah. Come on, they really? Yeah. They, I'm, I'm also surprised. 
So this interview kind of breaks my age, man. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? But he's young, he's young. He's young. Yeah, nah, he's it's young. okay, man. You know? Yeah. That's life, isn't it? So, so that's two. Uh, any more? With the, like really sentimental ones? Like you've really chased it for a long time and you finally got it or something like that. Um, Tell me about these. These looks like... Oh, these yeah. These looks really dope. So these, as you can see, is the Espo Air Force 2s. I think... If I'm not mistaken, these were the first ones that they kind of made uh, them in transparent kind of plastic material. Mm. It's all cracked, man. Oh, I've never worn these. The tags are even still here. Even the tongue is gone. Um, it's a it's a shame because they're but beautiful. Let's see what year is this? Yeah, I don't, know. I don't remember. Let's see. 203. 203? Yeah, 203. Eh? 03, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 03. So it's, uh, I think, 2000. That was really 09, the time, 11, yeah. I think, when I was like crazy over shoes. Then after that, I just slowly kind of like, I love shoes still, but... And oh, and they come in the socks. They come in the socks because it's transparent. So you wear them and then you can see the, the swoosh on their toe. Oh, shame I never worn them. <laughs> Tell me a bit about your love with SB. Did you have any love for SB back then? Because I see it supreme. Like a supreme down there. Definitely, I, I think it was cutting edge, you know, yeah. for a brand like Nike to be going into extreme sports mm. at that time because it was unheard of again, yep. right? So they took the leap. They got a really dope team. I think they came out with some crazy models as yeah. well. The Zoo York Dunk. Yep. The, you know, I think the, it was all the Paris Dunks. Going back to the top three that I want, I think two of them will be falling into the SB category. Which one? The first one, all time, that I want to get, I still haven't got, will be the first Supreme, the Supreme Down SB. Oh, okay. The, which is the elephant as well. Yeah, the elephant print, yeah. The elephant print, black one. Okay. And the uh, second one will be the Heineken Dunk. He's US 8, by the way. If you have a pair, hit him up. That's right. Instagram up here. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the second one will be the Heineken Dunk SB. Yeah, that one's quite... I've been looking for one for a long time uh, at the right price, of course. I'm a cheap kid. Yeah, actually, but for me too, I think only recently I have bought like sneakers for quite an expensive price. All my buys, even for my clothes, yeah. I don't really pay like crazy resale. You're a retail kind of guy, right? Yeah, and I think it's of value. I, yeah. I value things up to, to, to the amount paid, you know? Yeah. yeah. There is another pair which is like, it's a really odd one out, which is this one right here. You care to explain how these end up in your collection? Okay. Yeah. Th these end ended up in my collection just because for my foot problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was, was really light, huh? super light. And I've been researching a lot of the shoes. Actually, you know what? These shoes were so hard to get it felt like it was harder to get than Yeezys, you know? It's really hard to get. Yeah, and you can't find them really on StockX or all these different platforms because they were not really like shoes that were on the resale market. Mm. They were really for the runners yep. because they were all about comfort and the structure of the shoe. Trail runners. Yeah, so this one is the road one, but there were trail runners. I think the, the hype ones are the one uh, with engineered garments. Yeah. The, the one that looks like boots. Yeah. But, but they're re-releasing them in a few different colors this year. But these are just my one and only pair. They are very comfortable. And I'm not dissing Balenciaga or anything right now because as you can see, I have a pair of yes, Triple S as well. That they were the, like, the first pairs that came out. But if you actually research a little bit, you go back three to four years dated uh, of the Hoka One Ones, actually all those shoe colors are your Triple S colors and mm, your track colors. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if the shoe designer got influenced by this brand Inspired. Here. Yeah. Yeah. But there's one thing we've not touched yet and we see it like pretty extensively in your collection. So how do you think, what is your feeling on Kanye West? He, he's one of my favourite artists of all time. There's also a number, another number two, which is Pharrell. Yeah. I think Kanye and, yeah. Yeah, Kanye and Pharrell has uh, shaped or influenced me in a lot of ways, musically, fashion ways, you know. Um, but I think uh, these two guys have done extensively for I think not only the sneaker uh, culture yeah. but fashion or streetwear exactly. culture so yeah. I'm most respect to them and um, yeah I'm going to continue supporting them whatever which one was the one that started you off I see a turtle yeah, uh, yeah definitely these were so hard to get you yeah. know these were is. like yeah it's and it's huge. like the 
grail for me and um, yeah, it, it changed the game to be honest, Definitely. you know. Uh, I'm speechless. I think it just meant that much. Adidas, Adidas took a big gamble on him as well. Uh, I think almost zero Adidas branding and it's just a easy and then that's one Adidas 3-4 on the other side. I think this is revolutionary. He changed the game like you said. What do you think about where the direction of Yeezys are going like right now? Like it's available everywhere. Like what do you think about that? I'm always up for like non-exclusive as well. I think at the end of the day, it makes uh, people who really like the shoe purchase them. I think all the other bigger brands are doing the same because they don't want the resellers to be gaining the margins, right? right yeah. Why don't they sell them to the people who want it rather than the resellers? Yeah, I'm, I'm all for good things becoming mass because mm. that just shows that the taste of people are becoming better. Yep. Just like music, you know, we always wanted dance music to be the biggest music in the world. It became, and then a lot of purists say like, oh, you know, uh, dance music should be underground, but that's what they wanted like 20, 30 years ago. But just because it's not in the form that they want, it's yep. in another form because it was more popish. Yep. That doesn't mean it's bad. So I'm, I'm, I'm quite open-minded with this kind of thing. So. so there is another bunch of sneakers which you don't see here. And uh, it's, I don't know how to say this properly, but it's very hard to find. And uh, it's not displayed here because it's like hidden somewhere and it's covered somewhere. So we're going to go and check that out now. We're back and uh, we're going to talk about Japanese culture first before diving into this pass down here. Alright. Um, just tell us your experience and, and what is it like growing up and having Japanese culture influence your style and streetwear. I think it's a very big impact towards worldwide, not just me, you know, uh, with the whole baiting ape um, taking phenomenal as worldwide, right? Um, uh, after the whole American culture from basketball, then it got into like, the whole American streetwear like Supreme, Zoo York, Fuck, you know? Yeah. And then after that, so yeah, I think with that whole uh, bathing ape neighborhood, it, it got even more advanced and brands such as like Viswim came about. Yeah. How difficult it is to actually get your hands on these pairs? Uh, I think back then it was much more difficult. Yeah. Then it became a full-fledged brand. It had a lot of flagships around the world. After uh, a while, when I stopped buying, then I saw the price of retail per pair. Yeah. They were really expensive, yeah. going up to what, 2,000, 3,000 ringgit. Yeah. But back then when I was purchasing, it was only about 700 to about 1,001. Man, that is yeah. so unheard of. Yeah. When you know, I personally found out about this film, it's about already 3,000 plus to 4,000 ringgit for a pair. And that's like a good maybe eight, seven years ago. Hearing 700 is crazy. Man. Yeah, it was, it was, that, that was the price. Tell me how many years it took for you to get all nine pairs. Um, it was a short span. Um, I think, uh, thankfully, uh, because Surrender brought it in, so every time they would have a drop, I would travel to Singapore to buy them. And also some of them are not around anymore. Okay. So these are the surviving nine pairs. Yeah. Which is your like favorite? These, these ones. But by far, I think these are what made Wisdoms yep. popular and also the make of them. Of course, the leather is top notch, you know, even when you feel it, it's co compared to different sneakers, it's, it's just everything is so well made, yep. you know. Um, and then another one that is a key call out would be this. You know, what can you recall about the crystal? <coughs> oh, it's so dusty. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think they're in trend right now. Yeah. Even like LV making like sli uh, slippers yeah. like this, you know, or, or you call them slides now. This pair is a grail back yeah. then. It still is. It still yeah, is. It's so um, I wore these a lot and I'm, I'm not even sure if they still work. It's really hard now. I haven't seen them these in years. Actually, they, they st still look pretty good, man. <laughs> yeah, man, look dope. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like the easy, easy slides. Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah. Uh, this is this is crazy. Um, this is of course the collab with uh, Fragment. Uh, these were one of the most wanted models for a while uh, by Wisdoms. I was very, very happy when I got these. I actually can't remember how I got them. Oh, really? I can't remember even where I got them from. Okay. How I got them and where I got them from. I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, that. The, the. For, for those who don't know, we actually went through his like storeroom and we had to dig up quite a lot of boxes. 
so these boxes are hidden like deep 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 into some corner somewhere and uh man, yeah. when we opened it just now i saw the fragment logo i was like what the heck i just love how he's so consistent with the blue yeah as we could see yeah. from the fragment jordan one but this what what year is this 2003 2005 yeah right, i think 0506 yeah i think these were around 0506 oh man yeah. i don't mind <laughs> i think it still looks dope though oh it still looks dope huh it looks dope man I think I should wear these out again, man. Oh, the color pops, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. man. You, you should put them yeah, on yeah, now. I should put them on. <laughs> make, make me an inch taller as well. <laughs> so, but it's amazing. It's like it's almost like 15 years old. Yeah, I, I think Wisdoms is uh, timeless. I think it's just not very hype and trendy, but um, it can go with anything. I think with washed jeans and a T-shirt, it still looks really relevant, right? Uh, even Kanye was yeah, he rocking Wisdoms yeah. a lot, you know. So yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Link, for letting us into your closet in your house. Pleasure, man. And uh, before we go, Link just launched a new series called Beats. It's all about eating. It's all and, about eating, and, right? And, and, yeah, why, why it's Beats is because Blink eats. Okay, cool. Uh, it's all available on your Instagram page. Uh, we're keeping it bite size. Okay. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, so just one minute, all about food. Hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, don't forget to subscribe.